This is going to be your guide to version exclusive Pokemon in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. So let's start off with the box art legendary Pokemon. In Pokemon Ultra Sun, you will receive Solgaleo. In Pokemon Ultra Moon, you will receive Lunala. I know it's obvious, but I think it's just kind of a nice little intro for the video. Now for the rest of the video, all of my information was obtained from Cerebi. So you can go to Cerebi and find a page of exclusive Pokemon to said version, and then that's kind of going to be the breakdown right there. The reason why I'm making a video of it is because some people People just prefer a video format guide turn on the video just kind of soak up the knowledge and you're good to go if you want like specific in the moment where can I get this Pokemon or if you want to find out if Pokemon's version exclusive I recommend that you hop on over to Cerebi and then you can scroll down through the list and find the Pokemon that you're looking for now I'm going to kind of do this in list of importance I feel so let's talk about the new Ultra Beast and their exclusivity so you will find Blacephalon in Pokemon Ultra Sun version and you will find Stack Attacka in Pokemon Moon version these are the names of UB Burst and Assembly in the new Pokemon games as for the other Ultra Beasts, you will find Kartana and Buzzswole in Pokemon Ultra Sun version, and then Pheromosa and Celesteela in Pokemon Ultra Moon version. One thing to note is that exclusivity carries over from Pokemon Sun and Moon into the Ultra variants of the games. So Sun exclusive Pokemon are Ultra Sun exclusive, and that's kind of it. As for finding the Ultra Beasts, the Ultra Beasts will appear in white wormholes when you are going through the Ultra space, and then it's just going to kind of be a dice roll from there of a common, uncommon, and rare encounter table. So depending on what game you have, will be the exclusive Ultra Beast that appears after that. Also, as you might have noticed up until this point, on the left we have Pokemon that'll be in Pokemon Ultra Sun, and on the right we have Pokemon that'll be in Ultra Moon. I'm just gonna say Sun and Moon to kind of not have the commentary be any more cluttered, because I have to say Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon every time, gonna get a little weird. Next up, let's talk about Legendary Pokemon, which also brings up an interesting aspect of this video. Many people pre-ordered Pokemon Ultra Sun or Ultra Moon version before the Legendary Pokemon were announced. However, when they were announced, the Pokemon Company already told you which Pokemon are going to be in which games, which is pretty nice of them, and also reflects something on this video. This video is coming out pretty much the day the games are coming out, so unless you are buying it after release or getting ready for holiday season or something, this is mostly just going to be a reference and not a guide to buying the games, but it can still be used that way. Also, if you were basing your decisions off of Legendary Pokemon, you should have already checked with the Pokemon website since that information was available, so maybe you should consider subscribing to keep up with all of the relevant Pokemon information that you could ever need. So in Pokemon Ultra Moon version, we have Lugia, Entei, Kyogre, Latias, Palkia, Regigigas, Zekrom, Thunderous, and Eveltal. Now the crazy thing is, except for Zekrom, these were the legendaries I got in all my games growing up, so it's just kind of a win right there for me. And I know there's going to be a lot of people that l prefer the Pokemon Ultra Sun version, because I mean, you're going to get Latios as well as Groudon, which is pretty cool. You also get Heatran instead of the Regigigas, so that could be different since that's not like a box art decision or anything like that. And then there are some trio legendaries that are going to be exclusive, like the Raikou as well as the Tornadus. So we get, we get into some interesting breakdowns with Pokemon Ultra Sun Ultra Moon, but at the end of the day, this is Pokemon, and they want you to buy both their games. Now, some other legendary Pokemon will be exclusive in that you have to trade over one of the legendaries from one game into the other game, have both of them for the encounter, and then that is a chance that the Pokemon will appear. Such as Suicune, you will need Raikou and Entei present, which means you need Pokemon from both Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Now, it's time to talk about exclusive fossil Pokemon. So, it appears that all of the fossils can be found inside of Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, and the way that fossils work is it doesn't matter which game you take the fossil to, you will be able to restore that Pokemon. So, if we take Lord Helix, throw over in the Pokemon Ultra Moon version, we can still end up with an Omanyte or an Amistar like that. So it's just going to be which Pokemon you can find in those versions. Sun Pokemon Sun, that is going to give us the Anorith, Kranidos, Omanyte, Tirtuga, and Tyrant. And in Pokemon Moon, that is going to give us the Shieldon, Kabuto, Lily, Amora, and Arkin. That was pretty difficult to do in one take, but that's going to be the one, those are going to be the false Pokemon that you find in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, respectively. Now, as for just random Pokemon floating about the Alola region that are going to be exclusive in the Alola decks, we are going to be able to find Houndoom in Sun, as well as Minetric in Moon, and then some other Pokemon are going to be hopping over, like the Golette and the Clauncher versus the Skrelp and the Baltoy. So actually, you do see some theme right there. Baltoy and Golette is an interesting one to think about because they're not really paired together, but they do get this exclusive pairing in Pokemon Ultra Moon, and then when we saw X and Y, we had Clauncher and Skrelp 
kind of exclusive anyways. And also, like I mentioned earlier, Pokemon that were exclusive in Sun and Moon version are going to be the exact same in the Ultra versions of the game. So if you want an Alolan Vulpix, you will want the Sun version, and if you want the Alolan Sandshrew, you're going to want the Moon version. So I feel like there's some trade-offs. Like, I know that there's going to be a lot of Pokemon fans out there that prefer every single Pokemon in one version that's exclusive to the other version, but I also feel like there's a good amount of balance and trade-off here. For Pokemon Ultra Moon, you end up with Lugia, but you don't get the Alolan Ninetales. A lot of people like Lilligant over Whimsicott, but when you get into that competitive aspect, a lot of people use that Prankster Whimsicott as well, so I feel like you're not really getting too ripped off. Maybe a Ranguru wins out much more than a Passimian just because that Trick Room is really powerful with the Instruct, but overall it seems like it's going to be pretty solid, and then like what we saw with Pokemon Sun and Moon, Rufflet and Braviary, Volibee, Mandibuzz, those are going to be exclusives, and then Turtonator, Drampa, so that's going to be pretty much it on the Pokemon that you've already seen and obtained, but there is a new feature that is introduced in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, and those are Totem Stickers, which allow you to redeem them to receive Totem Pokemon, and yes, the totem Pokemon are exclusive. I mean, you could kind of hint at that because even in Pokemon Sun and Moon version, the first trial is going to have a different totem Pokemon. You can even either have the Gumshoes or you can have the Eradicate. So how are you going to be able to cross the exclusivity to obtain either of those? So in Sun, we're going to get the Cutiefly, Lorantis, Gumshoes, Chargebug, and then the Alolan Marowak, and in Moon, that is going to give us the Alolan Raticate, Togetamaru, Araquanid, Salazzle, and then the Komo'o. So I don't really know how deep the mechanics go with the totem Pokemon, it's just like an enhanced size Pokemon. It might not be like the biggest game-breaking decision, but it can still be pretty neat. That's like, alright, cool, I have the totem stickers, I already bought this game, and now I get to get a, an oversized Salazzle or Komo'o. Uh, looks like the Pokemon are a bit more desirable on the moon side, because I mean, Araquanid's cool. Like, Araquanid is already a giant spider, so making it more giant's pretty cool. Same with Togetamaru. The other ones, they seem like more of the forgotten Pokemon. Like, I don't see as many people being as big of a fan as the Gumshoe. But I do see Rabombi winning out because Rabombi is a super hype Pokemon. A lot of people do like the Lurantis in the end. And then there's also the Alolan Marowak. So maybe it does balance out a bit more when you start to break down the Pokemon that are exclusive. So there you go, guys. All of the exclusive Pokemon in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon versions. Comment down below which game are you going to be picking up and why. Are you going to be grabbing Pokemon Moon version because you're just a night owl? You know, you stay up all night playing video games. So you think Moon is just going to be cooler because nighttime is a better time. Are you buying it for the box legendaries? Do you want so Gal? Do you want Lunala more? Or is it all about the Ultra Beast, maybe just the other exclusive Pokemon? Like, that's another interesting aspect. Like, what is the biggest reason that the exclusive Pokemon, or what is the biggest influence the exclusive Pokemon is going to have on your purchase decision? Some people might only be doing it for the Ultra Wormhole Legendaries because, dang it, they want their Lugia, and nothing is stopping them from getting their Lugia in their game. They're not going to take a stranger's Lugia that they didn't fly through an Ultra Wormhole to obtain. They, that, that's going to be it. Like, just their most favorite Pokemon could be the only reason why they buy the game. And I want to hear that. I think that that's actually a pretty respectable decision to be honest. Um, for me personally, I like just Moon version. I'm a Night Owl. I'm up all night making YouTube videos and playing Pokemon and just like playing video games and stuff. And I, I take pride in being just like this nocturnal kid that plays Pokemon and just... I, I used to work overnight stock. I used to just have like this very night-driven lifestyle. So because I'm just like, night's better, you know? Sun Scareball? No, nah, I'm not dealing with any of that. Sun version's kind of lame. I just want to I just want to play in the darkness, and I think that that's one of the biggest decisions for influencing my uh, Pokemon Moon purchase. And overall, it ended up being a sound decision. Like, it's kind of weird how Pokemon Moon version fits with all of the games I've already played. I wonder if Game Freak is actually like trying to stick with what personalities might be attracted to certain games. Because yeah, like you look at Lunala, that's a cool Pokemon. It seems more on the side of Lugia compared to Ho-Oh, that you know we have Lugia lives underwater, we have Kyogre, that's a water Pokemon, and they've been kind of attracting that to the moon. So I don't know if that's like color theory or something that's like, oh, Kyogre is blue, night is dark blue. Because of that, we're just going to lump them together. Zekrom is black, so instead of having the white Pokemon be in the game about darkness, we put Zekrom in the light version, it's also a fire type Pokemon, that all matches up, and it just starts to break down those like really interesting reasons as to why we purchase games, and even the starter Pokemon that we choose. So I wonder like if Pokemon Ultra Soldier Moon kind of shows off the psychology a bit more because it's the same for Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. The legendary Pokemon in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, they also felt like the game that you chose, the legendary Pokemon you ended up receiving more or less complemented what you were expecting off of just your purchase decisions based off the names, the titles, and the colors associated with the game. That again, I'm, I'm, I like water, you know, I love swimming, I'm this very beach-oriented, fishing, water kind of oriented guy, 
Because of that, I got what I wanted in Alpha Sapphire version. I got my Kyogre, which I prefer over the Groudon. I ended up with Lugia and a couple of other exclusives, and I, I think that that's actually pretty cool. So I, w I do want to see if people in the comments are different to that, and also just kind of how Pokemon uh, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, and all the other exclusives end up working out for them. And as for my thoughts on version exclusive Pokemon, I honestly think that it's great. I don't think it's Game Freak being evil and greedy and trying to take as much money from us as possible and like this overall scummy business decision. I think that it really does promote a community. It does promote social behavior that, hey, I have this awesome Pokemon that I can only get in this game, and for the non-legendaries, for the non-exclusives, it's like, oh, I can just grind and farm up many of those and then kind of trade them back and forth, and then everyone wins off of that. So it makes you go out, meet other trainers, and then trade your Pokemon. The same that it does for having to trade to evolve certain Pokemon. It does get kind of annoying when it's like, oh, I need to get all these competitive Pokemon, I need to trade them, trade them to get them all the way up, but at the same time, you have to put in the work in Pokemon. I see it as the other way around. I find it greedy. I, cr I find it spoiled that you want everything to be only in your game and not have to work for any of your things or go out and meet people and just have everything handed to you. I think that the Pokemon company, they've done a good job at kind of having these underlying game mechanics that kind of go against that. Unfortunately, hacking's kind of snowballed because the community's gotten pretty bad. Because I know there's a lot of people that just cry about it, like, oh, why do I have to buy two games just to get both legendary Pokemon in the Pokemon games? Or something like that. But again, like, if you get a shiny, very valuable prize Pokemon, someone might not care about their legendary and just be like, okay, cool, I'll take this really awesome rare Pokemon for the legendary that's in everyone's game. Now, what you can also do is just kind of blast through the game, catch the legendary, trade it off, and then just kind of reset the game, wash, rinse, repeat, and now you have an army of trading Pokemon, and then that Pokemon has value now because there's people that didn't buy that game that want it off of you, and then you can kind of demand a pretty good price. So I think that it does stimulate the trading economy. I do like how some games do let you get both. Like in Pokemon Sun and Moon, technically you can get both because you get two Lunala, you trade the Lunala for Solgaleo, and that's how you get both. In Gold and Silver version, or Heart Gold and Soul Silver version, you do get access to all the legendary Pokemon as well. So sometimes they just kind of give us multiples, but other times they do encourage players to kind of work with each other. I think that's a good thing overall. So what are your thoughts? What do you think of the guide? That's kind of all there is to it. So if you guys enjoy the video, hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.